Ramble. Thank you to Best Fiends for sponsoring today's episode. You know what you should do on uh, the tripod Mag- or on You Can Sit With Us? Maggie did this to me the other day. So they yeah. just did that that movie game. Yeah. You should have her do the emo music game <gasps> because oh. she was driving around with me and just playing all oh. of her emo hits. And I was like, I've never heard this song before. And she's like, whoa, what? How? And I'm like, I just, I've never heard it before. Was Maggie emo? She was emo as hell. Look, That's every middle awesome. schooler is sad. She had side yeah. bangs that did not quit. <laughs> wow. The oh. coolest kid in my whole freaking middle school had side bangs. And, and I, no shoes. No, he wore shoes. <laughs> he wore two pairs oh. of shoes. Definitely wore shoes. But he would like mosh. And I was like, whoa. And was it was, sort of the Bieber swoop? It was a Bieber swoop, but it was like even like deeper than the Hold it was on. deeper than the Bieber swoop. Okay, change of subject. <laughs> Invention yeah. idea. Absolutely. Invention idea. Welcome to the tripod. Shoes that your shoes go into. <laughs> so they're like you arrive at a function and you take off your shoes to reveal your clean shoes. But they're sort of like giant sneakers that you put your sneakers into. Oh, like a painty, painter's boot the, that you put on when you go on a white psych. Are kind you picturing of, except, a shell? Like I'm, I'm picturing a, a bear hole? trap that you step into whoosh, and it That'd be cool. I'm just talking about like it's a giant sneaker of the same sneaker you're wearing that mm-hmm. you slide your sneakered foot into and oh. tie up. So they look kind of ridiculous like clown shoes, but that is the fashion. Kingdom right? Hearts. Style. And then when you get to the Met Gala, mm. you take off and do a shoe <laughs> reveal. And yeah. I was like, whoa. And it feels like this is possible. Sneakerheads, they love the crazy shoes, yeah. the loud shoes. Mm-hmm. And this could be finally a time where like clown size shoes could be mainstream. Now that brings us to a great question. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're invited to the Met Gala. Keith, yes. we love your fashion and we want you to sort of do the pinnacle of what your fashion is. Keith, Rainy, Zach, what do you wear uh, and what's your theme? I'm well, what is the theme? The theme? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Hyperbole. It's, I, it's each person dresses up as themselves, but more. Oh, that's actually, okay. Met Gala needs to do that. That's a really good that's one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the tightest, <laughs> shortest shorts I can put on, so much so that my thighs are like bulging around the that's good the the, the end of the shorts. Yeah, and then a chicken finger, chicken <laughs> finger pattern <gasps> blue squared crop top, Whoa. oversized. Ooh. It's so big really that it doesn't good. even look like a crop. It actually engulfs my shorts oh. as well. But it's a crop. You're sort of poo bearing it. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then I take off that. You know, there's always a reveal. I take off that shirt. <laughs> Where does the reveal happen? On the carpet? On the, on the stairs. On the stairs. On the stairs that people fall down. Yeah. And I'm wearing two chicken nugget pasties just off my nipples. Whoa. So the nipples are still there. So, okay. So nipple presence is still accurate. Very nipply. It's yeah. more of a misplaced polka dot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, really, 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 really like circulation cutting off tight short shorts. <laughs> Are you going to be okay? <laughs> it says no, circulation cut is beauty. Have you? I don't know if you've heard about fashion, Miles. It's not supposed to feel That's good. That's a great point. For my Met Gala look. Yes, please, Zach. Uh, you remember when Bjork wore the swan around mm. her neck? How could I forget? Not far enough. My uh, swan will be alive. Yeah. Wow. I will have live geese wrapped around my body. Mm, that's really good. And then I will have a leash with six geese mm. and I will be walking them <laughs> like they're dogs and all the geese will be wearing glasses Yeah, and they'll all be wearing uh, weirdly very tight blue uh-huh. checkered yeah. uh, uh, and short shorts that are cutting off their circulation. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all going to look like little Keiths. That's mm-hmm. really nice. Um, You've got the continuity. It's like, yeah, we grew up together. Yeah. We came up together. We all wear short shorts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You the, con- of, uh, the continuity. I love that you said mm-hmm. continuity. <laughs> what mm-hmm. is, what's continuity. The continuity. Continuity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the continuity. Yeah, no, actually. <laughs> yeah, no. I can't do that. In the other one, how about we just say instead of faux fox, <laughs> <laughs> a fox paw. Voga is Vogue? another one. Vogue. Mm. No, Vogue. Vogue. It should be Vogue. 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 Yeah. Vogue. Yeah. What's in Vogue today? Well, that's is, so in vogue way. That's in vogue way. The goo. <laughs> yeah. At the Met Gala, I would wear, so I have actually thought about this as an eighth grader and <laughs> <laughs> you're tapping into your eighth grade. I would wear yeah. Skechers and, <laughs> yeah. and well, they'd be Heelys. Yeah. Yeah. I was like going through mod cloth shout out and I was like, this dress is so beautiful. 
if I were obviously dating Justin Bieber, mm. Bieber, 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 Bieber. <laughs> and we like <laughs> no relation, <laughs> no relation, and we were on the carpet, I wouldn't even wear an expensive dress. I would just wear this one, and it probably cost like fifty dollars, but I probably would thought that was expensive, and so that's probably what I would wear. <laughs> <laughs> so just some dress so that you didn't dress. describe other yeah. than it was, it was so pink. beautiful <laughs> and maybe pink. even $50. Yeah. <laughs> you would wear that to the Met Gala. It was like this pink, like really floral, hyper feminine. It went down to mm. like probably, you know, four inches above my knee. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Saucy. <laughs> Saucy. Well, you're wearing the ankle cutoffs. Your legs are blue. Well, my thighs. Well, yeah, my thighs. I'm talking it's like barely I mean, as short as you can be without it being a Speedo. Yeah. You okay. know, but yes, uh -huh. the, it's so tight <laughs> that you can see my heartbeat. Jesus. <laughs> In my whole leg as it struggles. Here comes Keith Habersberger wearing the thumper. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, do me a favor. Thighs. We're going to do a pillow swap. I pillow want that swap. Pillow. This one? I'd yeah. want to dress like 2019 Florence Pugh. Uh, What's that? She's got cool blonde hair that's kind of awesome. So I do a bleached look. Blonde hair, blonde eyebrows. People mm -hmm. are going, who's that? Is that Florence? Zach's leaving. No, I'm taking my oh, sweater, sweater off. It's too off. hot. I, I think wanted, I might turn it to the AC. I in wanted a to brag about my sweater, but it's, it's no, a great right. sweater. It's yeah. a great sweater. But um, I'm going for a Florence pl plu blue look, and I'm wearing a blazer up top and a pant on the bottom and Kingdom Hearts <laughs> style shoes. Big. <laughs> so you like the big, the big shoes. Are yeah. Mm -hmm. Clown adjacent, but I want to have a big blonde hair and people are like, whoa, that's crazy. And I want the pants to be so big, not around the waist, but like flared. Uh -huh. So they're gigantic. Like, yeah. So Here, people are yeah. like, what's they going on there? Here's something we, I don't think I can't believe hasn't been spoken about. Florence Pugh, I think, looks exactly like Zach, Bra Zach Braff's girlfriend. Are you having a stroke this morning? I literally, <laughs> listen, uh, yeah, I don't even know what's up. You know that Florence Pugh was Zach Braff's girlfriend. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, it's not what you're saying. <laughs> and I would say that Florence Pugh, Zach Braff was Florence Pugh's boyfriend, but anyway. Mm. Damn right. Mm. Um, But in Scrubs, the girl that he's like, the, the love interest. Sarah Chalk. Yeah, it looks oh. exactly like Florence Pugh. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. We'll have to get our team Both on blonde. That. <laughs> um, but I do want to get I'll into the it. Red Bull because I think this is part of why I'm like, <sighs> some. So Rainy this morning mm -hmm. comes in and she yeah. goes, is today the day I try Red Bull? <laughs> yeah. Because I was, I was going to do a cold brew, a Target Simply Organic cold brew because that's the kind we get, but it's my least favorite. And I'm going to let Jack know that I actually like the Starbucks one. But <laughs> I was like, there's no Simply Organic cold brew so but there is red bull so maybe i should try it but i've never had it and it's sort of intimidating to me so i got two flavors <laughs> i would say you're talking way too fast to add red bull to the mix I'm yeah well no it. so you have two flavors here and i want to just let you know that the orange one's not going to be what you want <laughs> <laughs> that, you don't know but yeah she's never had either she's of never them. had either but i just find that if a bright orange can or this early in the morning is going to be sort of um, a, orange juice. Have you ever heard of it? That doesn't come in an orange <laughs> can. Keith. Concentrates do. That's a great point. Look, if you're making it from frozen yeah. short, short of Red Bull sponsoring us, which I do have a call later. Um, <laughs> I, I do not endorse this as a energy for you. Mm, I know oh, Keith, yeah, for you, for Keith, me, Keith lives on it and mm. I don't think it's good or healthy. Yeah, it's not. And I only <laughs> live on it when I have like lots to do. So like I was living on it last week because I had tours and I was <gasps> yeah. doing shows yeah. and but I'm already in withdrawal <laughs> like yesterday it oh. was like 5 p.m. and I was like I'm so tired I wish I could have a web bulb but I don't need it for anything tonight so I woke <laughs> Have you ever Jeez, tried that? I don't like that. I know voice. you don't like that. Voice. Well, if, if you don't like it, then let him have his goddamn Red Bull. That's right. Maybe yeah. he's, yeah. he's got to have his Yerba Mate. I hate the flavor. Really? I love it. I got handed one once. We were walking in a wasn't a parade. I don't know. We were walking on the street <laughs> <laughs> and someone said, do you want a Yerba Mate? I'm like, sure. And I took a sip like, Wah! Yeah, and I bad. did it like right in front of the guy who gave it to me. I said, this is horrible. He said, it's not for everybody. Oh, <laughs> I, was like, he was disappointed. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm going to throw this away. He's like, it's all good. <laughs> like, I think it's, and then I kind of continue. I'm like, you like it? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, really? <laughs> I love it. I think it's so good. I know. And all tasting. the other, you know, you and Eugene both like it. Yeah. 
It's a bitter taste. Lots of other people like it. I think it tastes like gross, and I hate matcha as well. I don't know. You think, ate matcha? It tastes like grass. I yeah, like grass. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm on Keith's team. Unless you are sugaring that shit up, it is grass. Moo I moo. Love, I'm a cow. Uh, yep. Hey, because you're eating grass. That's great. For also, you. I had so I my Maggie. First of all, can I brag real quick before yeah. we get into Red Bull? Yeah. Maggie got me a little caddy daddy uh, drink caddy. So I've got I can carry carry four drinks with me everywhere yeah. I go instead of holding them in my arms. So I had my smoothie, yeah. my water, my matcha, mm -hmm. my tea. I now, had four drinks this morning. Now I want to and and this is maybe uh, a too personal yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, no, let's talk but about it. Do you think that having four <laughs> drinks is more about having four drinks? Or do you like it's like that's important to your identity? You like to be the guy that has four drinks? Or do you feel like every day you really want to have the four drinks? Because I saw that drink Eddie and I thought that seems like a little much. Now Miles. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I appreciate you trying to yuck my yum. Yeah. And let me just. And I'm not yucking here. You. I'm an anthropologist. Yeah. Okay. So you want to understand. <laughs> so normally I'm a two drink boy. Yeah. I have my smoothie. Mm -hmm. I have my tea. That's every morning. But then I go, oh boy, I sure am dehydrated. And Maggie goes, why don't you bring. Wow. Rainy's cracked in. Rainy, I don't know. Oh, wait. It's I don't know it's how long have to we be can a moment. Wait. wait. I was just opening. Okay. Yeah. So she, <laughs> she's going to let it decant. Well, yeah. Like, it, needs to, it needs to breathe for five minutes before she drinks it. It's a strong smell. But I love keep how going. you also tried to quietly do one of the most obvious <laughs> sounds. I was like, yeah. it closer to the microphone and then did it quietly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I agree with Zach. Sometimes you need lots of liquids and it's hard to carry them. So yeah. I have a smoothie. I have a tea. And Maggie goes, well, you should bring your water. And then this morning I made my tea and I was like, I really want matcha, but I don't really know how to make the matcha that well. Mm. And then Maggie goes, would you like me to make you a matcha? And I go, oh, sweetie. Mm. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's So cute. she made me a matcha and I added monk fruit sweetener, which tastes like sugar, but your oh. body doesn't register it as such. Monk fruit? I hate the artificial Where, where does it go? In your butt. And you just poop it out. I have no idea. Out. Monk fruit sugar. <laughs> that feels like sweetener. one of those things that's sold to rich people. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Where do you think I got it, That's man? Right, I got it at Air One, the Whole Air Foods, one, the Whole Foods. I, I love Air One. I love but um, Air monk fruit sweet, so it doesn't. Your body doesn't know that it's sugar. It's like, woo. I'm not a scientist. Yeah, that's fair. But what I'm, yeah, what I'm getting from that story is, I want a fiance. <laughs> she's yeah. getting you present. Yeah. She's making you matchies. Your baby's yeah. making you a matcha. She's been on a real like, <laughs> act, like you know, like your love languages, acts of service. She's been on a real acts of service kick lately. What's your love language? Doing it. <laughs> What are the love languages again? No, but, uh, love language is like is uh, there's like words of aff like affection, like words. Yeah, <laughs> language. <laughs> what is this language? <laughs> Physical touch, uh, gifts, Quality acts time. of service, and time. Yeah. Um. So I'm definitely uh like. A verbal touchy. You touch and you'd like to talk. I like, I like it's like not weird, but you're making it Yeah, you like, feel like you're well, like making you're me thinking that it's weird. I don't know. I like I like cuddling. <laughs> cuddling like, is good. I'm a snuggler. I like to snug. And I also like I feel like mine is um maybe quality time. Yeah. Like I just feel like going on like a nice little activity, even if it's just like let's just mm. hang out and sit here yeah. and read a book. Neither of us are reading. <laughs> but um I love to like pretend like you're gonna read and then you chat. We we took it, we took the quiz really early on. It's funny because for whatever reason, physical touch is the only one that feels too revealing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, yeah. Uh, but we took we both took the quiz early on, and Maggie's quiz said that the lowest one for her was receiving gifts. And oh. I'm like, <laughs> sucks to suck. You ain't getting nothing. <laughs> and she's like, no, I do like gifts. I'm like, actually, according to your yeah. chart, you don't. I know <laughs> little gifts are really nice to receive. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Yeah, yeah, I think I like receiving. All of those Same. types of love languages. <laughs> <laughs> You're I, an omni lover. I like, to be, I like <laughs> to be touched. I like to be talked to. I like to have things done for me. I like presents. Yeah. I like all those things. What do I like to give? I think it's different for like friends. Yeah. There's a love language of like, oh, you know, like I like, uh, oh, I like planning trips, which I guess would be like an access service, like planning fun things, That's a finding big fun things service. to do, mm -hmm. recommending places to go eat, like that. Makes me happy. That's For Becky, I like, I don't know, I guess everything. Aww. I like doing all those things. But yeah. sometimes I don't want to do those things too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I like 
don't think about a gift for Becky when I'm on the, on the road. I'm not good with, and she's upset about that. And I don't I, think she cares. I'm like, I'm like, what do you, you want something from Indiana, Becky? I don't think you do. I'm right there with you, Keith. So it was always like, hey, you I got you me. this trinket to remind you of a trip you didn't go on. <laughs> yeah, I know it's kind of like, uh, yeah. I, did, I brought her home from ch- some chocolate that I got given by a chocolatier. And I'm like, that's, this is for Becky. That's good. You know that place you didn't go? Here's a keychain. I know. I never understood. Mm. Like, I, I get like bringing back like, like chocolates, I guess, or something like that. But yeah. when you bring back like a, a thing specific to that place, I'm like, but you didn't go. Life has all these, you know, big moments, challenging moments, but sometimes those little victories, they feel just as sweet. They move us along through our day. And my favorite little victory is playing Best Fiends and beating a level. So I'm talking about Best Fiends. Best you know Fiends. I am. It's a puzzle game. They had puzzles every stinking day. Every day there's more puzzles. I'm on puzzle 380 or something at this point. I love the game. You match up stuff. They disappear. You're fighting slugs. You got little bugs. The bugs, <laughs> they're your fiends, right? They have abilities like clearing a row vertically. Every single level has sort of a different objective, whether that's getting a certain amount of an item or killing a slug. I don't know. Guys, it's a great puzzle game. Sometimes it takes me three tries. Sometimes the levels are hard. <laughs> Sometimes they even, it'll say hard level, and I know, oh, Keith, you've got a few tries at this one, that's for sure. Download Best Fiends for free from the App Store or Google Play, plus earn even more with $5 worth of in-game rewards when you reach level 5. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you where Sarah, I think, also would like gifts from lots of different places, so now I'm like... On the last day of every trip, I'm like, hmm, oh, yeah. okay, let me just see if I can buy her like a notebook or something. I think uh, you should always do food. Food is good. And like, get a look, like, if you're in the East Coast, hey, maybe someone has a saltwater taffy. Bring back some saltwater <laughs> oh, taffy. That is nice. Yeah. I Regional love- candies. They're always a hit. Okay, That's audience, we've made you wait long enough. Rainy has cracked open. The Red Bull has decanted. Yeah, it's got I time want you to, to take a whiff. Tell us what you're experiencing. What are the notes? Take a sniff. It's, it's like a little medicinal, I would say. Yeah, medicinal. Medicinal. What is up? Today? Medicinal. <laughs> medicinal. <laughs> what is up today? <laughs> yeah, it's and it's um, it sort of reminds me of like a little like candy from when I was little. Yeah, oh. Jolly Rancher style. But I do need um, oh Jolly Ranchers. Do you guys like them? Yeah, I mean sometimes I like a candy soccer. memories. The watermelon. I need some watermelon candy. and cherry. <laughs> yeah, green lot. apple was yeah. good until you, I went to college and had Bacardi green apple rum and got too drunk and now I don't like any green is apple there, flavor at all. Is, yeah, is there <laughs> an alcohol that like you are like? Now, Bacardi, big Bacardi big, yeah, yeah. What maybe like I, I mean I haven't had this in fucking over a decade, but like the. The whipped cream flavor Jeez. of, of uh, Smirnoff. Yeah. The, yeah. The those are disgusting. Cream. Yeah. It was like a whipped cream for a birthday cake or something Bacardi. like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, they had yeah. really fucking oh. sweet bullshit and they still probably yeah. do. Yeah. I would say that Red Bull does remind me of carbonated cough syrup. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But good cough syrup. <laughs> it's so good. I'm going to get this caffeine in my bloodstream. Yeah. Take a sip and then tell us what you think. <laughs> Such a loud goal. <laughs> It really was. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, it's not my favorite, but it's not like horrible. What's the flavor you taste? Uh, no wrong it's answers. Fizzy a little bit, <laughs> and <laughs> and it's like uh, it's fruity, but not like fruit <laughs> from nature. Mm-hmm. And I'm just imagining <laughs> someone at their laptop sitting in front of the podcast, like. What is this? <laughs> no, they like it. And now tell me, tell me, have you had other energy drinks before? I don't think, I mean, what's another example? Monster. Of, no, I haven't had Full that. throttle. Uh-uh. Four loco. No, I've, not, I've never had Nas. it. Nas. Nas. <laughs> Nas. What was that? A showstopper. Nas was definitely a college one. It was like cheap college and one. I definitely Bang got it. Bang energy. Bang. Yeah. Balls. Soby. <laughs> oh, balls is good. So be life water. I didn't have balls. balls. Balls fucking rules. And it's funny to say. Yeah. It's it was a, a glass, bottle glass bottle that was ribbed. It had like little, I'm serious. Yeah, it, had it little was called dots. balls. It was ribbed. Wow. I know it sounds like we're fucking with you, but we're not. It ribbed. was good. Ugh. It was pretty good. It was like, it was very seltzery. Yeah. It was lighter. 
less syrupy. Yeah. I don't know that I'm a beverage boy, but I think I'm trying to be. <laughs> a barista who's not you're a beverage. A, you're a barista. I'm a coffee. But that, that to me is a different, like I will get a coffee and I like a coffee and a nice coffee and all that stuff. But I think that a beverage boy or a beverage girl is somebody who <laughs> they're going into a gas station and they're thinking, I'm going to leave here with a little bottle that's going to be unexpected. <laughs> I'm going to leave here with a naked green juice. Oh, I'm, leave I, here with I'm a Gatorade goblin. Yeah. The- <laughs> You know what I'm saying? A road trip drink is always a Gatorade. It's so good. It has a big mouth to drink from. Or if you can't stop at a rest area, it's the best for peeing into. Oh, yeah. Not that I'm trying to pee in the car. You know what else is good to pee into? I used to be a real Snapple slut. Snapples I are good would. too, but it's glass and there's something intense about it. You don't want to piss in a glass. Well, but then I pivoted to being also wide mouth, a vitamin water vixen. Oh, and yeah. I Vitamin water <laughs> is just like, didn't they get sued? Shitty Gatorade. Yeah, didn't they yeah. get sued because yeah. they were like, well, this you, does not have vitamins in it. You, but it's, you know what it was? It, for me, it Same was the gateway. Same as Naked Juice being like, this is bad for you. Yeah, no, Naked Juice is I, not good for you. I, I kind of, I like, it was the gateway that got me down to water. I just kept watering down my drinks until I was like, why am I drinking this? slightly flavored yeah. bullshit. No, I love the the Gatorade that's like half water. They have like a Gatorade light and yeah. it's so much better. Oh, definitely. It's just like, I think maybe it's called Gatorade light, but that's what it is. It's just half of the half Gatorade, half water. Yeah. It's excellent. Rainy, you're about halfway what do we through think? the can. Now that you're slurping and glurping. <laughs> You're going to be tweaked in a I, second. I am sorry, like already feeling like my brain get a little... Hmm. Now, before you finish that one, do you want to taste the orange? Well, I was just going to ask you guys, like, which one, which flavies? Um, I hear that... There's not, a yellow one I The like. yellow one I hear is good. The tropical yeah. pineapple-y one. But I, I, I like sugar-free original. Is this sugar-free? No. No. My, uh, in, there was a study when I was in college that they gave sugar-free Red Bull to frogs, and it made their blood when they dissected them like sticky. Yeah. No, I read a story about an, like a, I, it was a very sad story of like a father who was otherwise very healthy, but apparently drank like three to four Red Bulls <sighs> a day. Oh no. And his blood was too thick. Co- it like coagulates. So we used wow. to call it sticky blood and it was like, yo, let me get one of them sticky bloods. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god! So I try not to drink them every day. Yeah, so it is not <laughs> ideal for you. No, I and uh, you know, I like coffee the most. Me too. But this is making me feel like I want to dance. That's yeah, the sugar. That's, Rainy, yeah. don't let us stop you. People drink Red Bull to go out and party. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Red Bull vodka? It makes you want to dance. Oh, oh it's a party drink. Right. It gives you yeah. wings. Party it gives juice. you wings so you can fly. It's a drug. <laughs> All right. It is a drug. I honestly, I would say that my favorite combo I discovered at your wedding, Miles. Yeah, babe. We, uh, <laughs> we door dashed over some Red Bull. Yep. Pretty inappropriate. <laughs> Why is it inappropriate? <laughs> it's it was, my wedding. It was a wedding gift. It was a wedding gift. It was for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I it, offered it to everyone. So if I'm at your wedding, right? Yeah. And I door dash like a bunch of Doritos <laughs> to your classy event. Will you be like weird about that? Doritos, first of all, don't get you hype. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, but it was. I would think it was pretty funny. Yeah, I maybe will. Specifically, I, really I saw some of my brethren crashing, yeah. and I said, "Guys, yeah. we gotta be here for miles." That's right. Let's. And this is at a house. Get to pump up. So we have the opportunity to do something that we never get to do. Yeah. Let's DoorDash a pallet of Red Bull. A pallet, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> full crate. So I get a little high. Get a little Red Bull. That's the best. And you're ready to dance. Oh, that, by the way, the caffeine. Jordan Peele said that on something where he was like, a little bit of coffee, a little bit of weed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how I wrote Nope. He was mm-hmm. like, that's like the perfect combo. <laughs> it's true. And it, it's so it's, true. I, I, I mean, there's something to like, I can't do this on a work day, but on like a Saturday or Sunday when yes. chill, it's a chill day, awake and bake with your coffee. Mm. My God, what a beautiful day you have ahead of you. Yeah, that's You nice. can do your chores. Yeah. You can, you know, you leave. You saw that Sunday fun day. Sunday fun day. Yeah, you just do like you order some breakfast burritos, you have your oh, coffee, yeah. you play with the cats, you do some light laundry, <laughs> you put like, on some laundry TV or a movie. You just hang out. Yeah, that's nice. Yes, yeah, nice. It's uh, nice. I want to hang out soon. You guys <laughs> want to hang out soon? <laughs> no, not really with you. I mean, you guys can come, but I just want to have like a- <laughs> <laughs> Like I just want to have a day where it's just like oh, Rainy, man. what is a rainy weekend? Oh my gosh, what an exhilarating question. And I think, um, well, it's, it's, it's been crazy recently because I just moved. And so, yeah. and my friend, we sort of imported him from Rhode Island. And so he's like now moved in. 
Mm-hmm. And um, and so I've been like vibing with him. Go for yeah, some- like you wake up <laughs> yeah. on a Saturday. What's your first thought? What are you prepared about? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I go to a coffee shop. You do? Yeah, immediately. What's your order? Black coffee. Hell yeah. No ice. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, no girl. Ice. Yes. Just a drip coffee. Everybody's so confused about it every single time. They're like, latte? And I'm like, no, do you have just drip? And they're like, Americana? And I'm like, oh, well, if you don't have drip, like I'll do an Americana. Because sometimes they don't have drip. New- I know. Yeah, they don't. That, that irritates the shit out of me. It's yeah. like, you don't have just coffee? Yeah. Like, I can make you an Americana. I'm like, sometimes Americanos suck. Yeah, they can be yeah, The really espresso's bad. bad. It, it sucks. sucks. Yeah. It's easier to make a hot coffee. Um, But yeah, no, I'm going to a coffee shop. And getting a black coffee, oh, you know what I love is just getting on your phone and like planning, like getting going on the New York Times app. What am I eating today? Whoa. What am I going to Target to get some cleaning supplies? I'm going to clean. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm learning a lot from Rainy. This, this is, is cool. huge because this is how I want to start my day. Yeah. This is like I would love if I woke up every day and I went to the coffee shop and I planned out my day. Yeah. Generally, my day is like, all right, wake up, get the dog out there. <laughs> yep. You know, it's interesting. I had morning routine written down in my notes app for today. So I'm glad we're talking about it. Ah, I think it's important. We found our way there. We found our way there. Or you manifested it. Or I manifested it by forcing the conversation. <laughs> I, I, yeah, asking. I'll wake up on a Saturday. Wake up in the morning feeling like You're P. Diddy. Be, yeah, feeling like, like P. Diddy. B. Feeling like Miles B. Um, <laughs> and I will um, make coffee first thing. Take the dog to go take a piss. And then I'll, how's that dog peeing in your backyard? You taking him down the block? That's backyard pee. Okay, backyard pee. You get he, some uh, spots in mm-hmm. your lawn. He's got his paper. <laughs> but sometimes you get to recircle him around because he'll be like, "Up, oh, I actually didn't want to piss this time." And it's like, "I know you got to piss, dude." <laughs> go in a circle, and he's like, Ugh. "Sometimes he'll do a little like," and his leg will almost go up, and then he'll put it down. And he's it's like, like, he's like playing with you. He's fucking with me. Yeah. And so anyway, get him to go take a big piss, and then. Um, I will, what I want to do and what I sometimes do is take the dog to the coffee shop, get him to get a little exercise, get me to get a little coffee, (laughs) sit at the coffee shop, drinking my coffee, doing nothing, Mm. not looking at my phone. The goal there is if I've got music in, it's unstructured play. Mm. Hot coffee, no ice. You're just looking at the squirrels. You're watching mm -hmm. people chat and catch up. People yeah. watch world watch. That's the, like people need That's to dream. do that. Yeah. More often. And then I'll go home and then I'll usually like plop down to my computer, 10 hours of video games and it's Sunday. <laughs> 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 no. I think we should make this. I, Cause hmm, I would like starting right now, we're going to restructure our days. Whoa. We're going to come in later and we're going to, we're going to build in some coffee shop time. <gasps> That's huge. Whoa. Mandatory. I what like if we, that. Like other YouTubers, I know some YouTubers like put a McDonald's in their house. What if we just put a coffee shop in our house? I would. So something that I did recently was bartend for my friends. And (laughs) I found that if there was a coffee shop in our office, I would like not every day. (laughs) <laughs> we get fucking old. But a lot of days. But I would be happy to like make people a little coffee drinks because <gasps> I think that it, it does bring me joy to do mm-hmm. things that like I don't need to do anymore. I have the skill set to do, but like we'll bring other people. Acts joy. of coffee. Is Acts your love of language. coffee. I love making people coffee. Can we put you? I want to be able to walk to it though. Can we put you in the, in the parking conference room. lot? In the conference room. Okay. Conference room's fine. Yeah. It used to be a coffee shop anyway. That, that was oh, supposed is, to be. Is food a love language? Yes. Just by itself? It service. has to be. Service. I think that's under acts of service. Food. That's well, what yeah. I do. I like yeah. making people food, finding people food, ordering for people at restaurants so that like we have the that. best dinner possible. I love when you do that. I love doing it. I love going to a restaurant and being like, daddy's got this. Yeah, I'll be like, here's going <laughs> to get, yeah, he's gonna get his good I, shit. I'll order everything I think is good and then I will ask the server, mm-hmm. is there anything that you <laughs> think we missed that yeah. like we can't have this experience anywhere else. And uh-huh. sometimes they'll be oh, like, no, question. you got it yeah. all. You did a perfect order. Or they'll be like, well, mm. so th- these squash blossoms are pretty amazing. I'm like, okay, let's get them. Oh, that's the best. Okay, squash blossom. Squash blossom. Fried squash blossoms, the best tasting flowers. So Keith, what's your morning routine? Oh, you know me. Wake up, get some coffee, mm. bring Becky some coffee yeah. in the bed, sit in the bed, pet Alfred. Alfred's excited to be on my lap in the morning. It's so yeah. cute. We coast, we cuddle. Then I get up and I shower and I put on clothes and Becky's normally made me a smoothie while I'm showering and I leave. Shower every morning. Mm-hmm. Where do you go? Here. Oh, this is, this is an awesome. <laughs> <laughs> in my, week, I guess on a weekend. It's in my different. mind, it was Saturday. Uh-oh. But I get that for here. You yeah. shower every day. 
<clears throat> yeah, every morning. Do you shower every day? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't wash my hair every day. Yikes. And I don't. Am and I, I disgusting? Yeah. I just. And, no, you don't need to shower every day. No, you That's don't. That's some American uh, shit. For me, I like, it's part of my routine. Are you living that, a Parisian lifestyle? I shower once a month. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I shower probably every like two days. Yeah. Sometimes three. I So for me, I like, <laughs> it, it just helps me feel awake. And I like splashing water in my face. And I prefer to do that in the shower. I like that. Yeah. And I, 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 uh, <laughs> get congested typically at yeah. night. Yeah. So it's a really great way to like I need clear, to clear out my clear sinuses myself out. and wake we're, up. We're and snotty just, boys over mm-hmm, here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, I find in the East Coast, people are really into showering every day. Did you see? Did you feel that, Zach? I, that's where I grew up. It's also so yeah. hot it's right now. So, or it has been hot yeah. here. So like when it's hot, I shower. In, in the East Coast specifically, it's so fucking humid in North Carolina. You yeah. kind of have to shower every yeah. day because you're just caking on the sweat. And this is like a tale of the oldest time. We've probably even done this on this podcast. Most do you shower at night? Do you shower in the morning? Maggie's like, I want to shower. So I'm getting into bed clean. And I'm like, no, yeah. I sweat in these sheets. I want to wake up and start my day clean. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to crawl into my little filth pocket. Oh, God, I'm happy. you know it's true. I want to <laughs> just crawl into that filthy bed uh-huh. and, and just fester. Rither, wither, uh, wriggle around. Wriggle around. I want to be like a little worm in the dirt. Yeah. I want to feel crumbs from my last mm-hmm. meal <laughs> nestled against my body. And I want to yeah. I want to cocoon myself in a in a just onslaught of blankets. I want to mm. sweat, sweat, sweat Ruff. like a little roast <laughs> piggy. And then I, I want to wake up oink, and oink. wash it all away. Yeah. I will see like the sweat. Yeah. I, t- I'm just filthy all the time. Right? <laughs> Maybe you should shower. Maybe I should shower. No, I shower like every two days. I just feel like every day I don't, you don't need to shower that much. It's actually not that good for your skin to be totally frank. But I'm not totally <laughs> honest. I, I'm mostly you guys rinsing. <laughs> Compare I'm my skin rinsing. to yours. I want you to look at my skin and put your skin next to my skin and tell me my skin is I can isn't tell that your skin is dry. I can. <laughs> From over here, Zach. <laughs> Knowing who you are and your whole vibe, I feel like your skin is dry. You're anymore. calling me dry? I'm saying that you're moisturizing to make up for the fact that you're dry. <laughs> I think that you're crusty. <laughs> now, I smell myself often. Yeah. To make sure I don't stink. Uh-huh. If I stink, yeah. I'm freaking getting in the tub. I didn't say stink. <laughs> I said crust. I am not crusty. But my beard has been getting bigger and I've not been doing anything about it. Also, my hair is getting longer, and I am thinking about keeping it. I long. like it. I think you should definitely keep it. Long. I, think I don't gonna, know. What to I do thought with we were going to throw too. insults back and forth, but now I want to compliment you. <laughs> I, okay, so I don't. I don't. That's I put, the vibe we like to create. Putting in here. soap on your pits and bits. Yeah, I don't like wash my like arms every day. Right, You're, like I'm yeah. just rinsing for the most part. I'm washing the the stink factory parts of my body. You know, <laughs> time to go to the stink factory. You know you what I mean? <laughs> All they do is produce stink. That's yeah. their job is yeah. to make stink. Stinky There's parts bits. of your bodies that just make stink. And that's what yeah. they do. <laughs> they They're do. your exhaust pipes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I just, I guess like if I'm in the shower and I'm looping up, then I'm going to wash. I'm going to scrub down every bit. Yeah. I'm doing hands. I use bar arms. soap doing... now. Bar. I use Dove sensitive moisture bar soap and I fucking love it. You know, here's, can I tell you something? Yeah. I feel like nothing is even true anymore because I heard that Dove soap was like bad because it's like got too much moisturizer in it and makes your skin whatever. But I'll tell you this, whenever I was using the Dove shit, I felt like a hundred dollars. Yeah, I felt (laughs) great. I used to use it. And then Becky and I went through this whole journey of like trying to use other products that were like natural, natural and better. And like, I felt worse. And then I was recently I was like, Becky, I want to go back to my bar soap. Yeah. It's also, it's cheaper. Way cheaper. I love it. It really works for me. It smells and nice. I feel clean and I feel, and my skin is way less dry. And it's good for it. the environment. And I, and they help save all the dove. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that, not dove, but just like there's no packaging. Yeah. It's just, it's just cardboard boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there is though, like it's important to remember, obviously Dove is like a big company, but whatever. But it's important to remember that other more expensive beauty products capitalize on people being like, Dove is so bad. Right. You got <clears throat> got to use whatever Zach was putting in his fucking tea. Monkfish. Monkfish <laughs> beans. Monkfish sugar. <laughs> but like, I do think that that's a thing where people are like, yeah, like you don't want to have this on your body. You actually want to have grapeseed oil. Right. It's all <laughs> made out of oils. Yeah. It's all that's oil. That's just how it is. Yeah, I got a question. Oh, Quinta. Yeah, can we talk about this? Yeah. What? But you guys know her. Yeah, yeah. Is that what's her like? What's she like? <laughs> she's 
Quinta, well, let's just say, Amazing. Uh, Quinta Brunson, Emmy winner, yeah. won an Emmy for writing, outstanding writing for Abbott Elementary. So oh, yeah. fucking exciting. So cool. So we worked with her at BuzzFeed. And yeah. we're making she, a podcast. She came in. <laughs> <laughs> she came in. <laughs> Hey, look, we're talking about our morning routine. There's different, <laughs> there's different types of success. Some people are famous for making suspension bridges. Some people work <laughs> hard. That's a good point, Keith. You look, know, there's, there's a different lot of different, different things to do. Some people work hard for their success. Other people get on a podcast, hit record and talk yeah. about it. We the got, routines. we worked hard before and now we're just rolling around in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're not making anything new. We're just sort of stretching out. And that's fine. We worked hard so that we can splash in the pool of delight that we've created. We're not making the pool any bigger. Yeah. We're actually just splashing around, slowly losing water every day. <laughs> splash, splash. The yeah. water's getting lower. And we're not refilling it. And it's getting yeah. dirtier and et cetera. But no, so we worked with her. She, <laughs> she, she started working like maybe... Four or five months after us, she came in when we were at the second office that we worked at about speed. And she was super funny and super cool. And she actually came in to guest on something. And I made some videos with her because I was in the, we were like, there are these slang videos were trending, like people guest slang. And I was like, oh well, yeah. what, you know, obviously almost all slang comes from black culture and then yeah. it gets appropriated across everyone else's culture. So I did like an interview series with her, and it was like this little goofy between two ferns style video series where we talked about slang, but then she was also just clearly brilliant and started making writing projects for BuzzFeed and made her own like couple shows there. Yeah, we worked. I mean, we worked together for a while. Three we, years. We all got to make a bunch of stuff. I did some sketches with her that yeah. I got to shoot. Um, but was super. She came to my wedding. Yeah. <gasps> Rainy's face. Rainy's down. shocked. What's cooler that Quinta went to Keith's wedding or that we can text an email with Hank Green? Well, and by the way, with the Hank Green, I feel like that went dormant briefly. Why? I, I we got to get him in. We're I'm like, sure we got to get Hank. He lives in, in like the wilderness, right? Montana. Yeah. Oh. It's not the wilderness, but I'm obsessed I mean, with him. Wilderness. It's it's wild. I'm just there. thinking about You're him obsessed now. Obsessed with him. That's not what I heard. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, but one thing that oh, I always yeah. found really funny about Quinta is that she hates unscripted. She like can't mm. do it. She really struggles with it. Uh. And because if she has to repeat a line that's real, she can't do it. And that this is like by her admission. That's this is funny. not something that I've because I think she's great at it, and we all think she's great yeah. at it. But she just was like, I can't do that. Like I can't be like. Today we're doing this. It just yeah. is like, it's, it's kind so of this, foreign to her. The same way where like Eugene's like, I don't like hosting. And right, then occasionally sure. he has to host and he's great at it, of yeah. course. Right. Because like he's charming, he's smart, he's well spoken, and he's confident. Yeah. And he's like hosted <clears throat> many, many awards things at this oh, point. Yeah. He's like, I'm not a host. But he's done more hosting gigs than me. Right. Yeah. And right. I would say I am a host. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, but ever- so she's so so she's funny. Is she serious? I mean, she's serious about her craft. Yeah, she works really hard. Yeah. And is she like soft? You know what I to mean? To the touch? No, no, no. Like, you know, there are she's certain soft. people where she's She's a like, very warm, inviting person. Yeah. I met her yeah. once and she made me feel loved. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's she's, what I was asking. She's yeah. very yeah. warm, but she's also tough. I mean, yeah. I'd say her yeah. ultimate superpower, which you have can see by the way that she's been received, is making everyone feel like they have a really special connection with her. Yeah, yeah. Like I, met, she, I think I met her once as an intern at BuzzFeed and she said very few words to me and she made fun of me and it made me feel loved. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I like she just has a lot of people she loves. She has a lot of people that loves her. Mm-hmm. She works hard. She treats people well mm-hmm. and she keeps up with people like uh, she's she's just a great person she's, and we're, cool. we're so stoked for her success. Big yeah. shout out. Mm-hmm. Very happy. And we have her. a lot of, we've mentioned this on the show, but like we have a bunch of friends in that writer's room and it's just yeah. so fucking cool to see. Yeah. Aww. It's basically. Shout out to Kate and Justin who yeah. are now Emmy adjacent winners. Yeah. Ah, I that's mean, it's, crazy. It's like a small sub subsect of people from BuzzFeed, mm-hmm. you know, like are in that little thing and we saw them writing their projects with Quinta six years ago. Right. And yeah. seeing what the early shows of of what she was capable of doing were, and they were like super funny and super amazing. So it's just so cool. And she, as any like good person does, like brought those people with her. Like a lot of times you get offered a show and you're a writer, uh-huh. they're like, we fill the room, you're hired. Yeah. And you don't really have much say in yeah. what happens. But she was able to make sure that the people she wanted in that room were in that room. And that's like impressive because mm-hmm. there was a fight to get that to happen. That's it just how it is. It also feels like that should be, if you're successful with those people, 
Yeah. It's like breaking it up seems it like it should would be, be how it is. Just more dangerous for the but company. But I know, but you yeah. know, executives aren't artists and yeah. they think that they need to have sure bets and they only want to like staff it with rooms of people who have already won Emmys for writing other things. Uh -huh. you know? And sometimes you do benefit from experience. Like Quint is not doing this alone. She right. is ex oh, yeah. paired with experienced writers and showrunners. Like yeah. there, there is a team around her, but you know, you know, you also bring up the people that you have a rapport with. Cause at mm -hmm. the end of the day, a writer's room is about chemistry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're proud of her. Yeah. She's amazing. It's so cool. It's so it's cool. It's really great. And it, yeah, it's been very fun to see that like everyone who knew her and worked with her at any point, it it seems like everyone feels like they won an Emmy. <laughs> you know, oh, all yeah. of our friends are like, she did it. We did it. She oh, did it. She last, did it. <laughs> last week, I was in a diner in Ohio and I looked up on the TV that was playing and there was Quinta, <gasps> the face of Olay. Oh. And I was like, this is so cool. Just to be sitting, you know, I'm on tour right now, and then here's my friend. She's in a commercial, and then she, and then later she would win an Emmy. A few days later, it was really cool. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. surreal. Life I caught moment. up with uh, Zach Evans, who's our our good buddy, and mm -hmm. used to do a lot with Quinta. And he got to go to by Abbott. They're filming season two right now, and he was like, you know, this is gonna be so crazy. Like Quinta's filming a show, and he got there and was like, oh, this is just what we've always done. Mm -hmm. Like it, right. he was watching her do her thing, and it was you know just a bigger extension of the work that she had mm -hmm. been doing and it, it felt very natural in a way that like then comforted him and made him excited, it's, but it, it yeah. made sense. It's sort of like when we did the Food Network show, we were like, oh, it's going to be so different. And it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, It was like making our show. It was just, there were other people and there were more people and it was a little bit slower right, mm -hmm. in terms of moving things around, but it was the same as making it without a recipe here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious. What? <laughs> Different, different topic. Yeah. You guys introduced a song to me last week. Yeah. And I have one for you. <gasps> no way. What? I don't know if this is going to be as funny, but we're going to try. I'm psyched. Keith, last week you weren't here, but we introduced a song that was going viral on Reddit because somebody said that it was the song that they had on their boning playlist and their girlfriend after two years admitted that so she hated I it. I saw this trending, but I never actually heard the song. Oh, yeah. It's... But I saw that it was a song that didn't make any sense to bone to. Why don't you play it while I introduce this next one? <laughs> ba, ba. What are you feeling, Keith? And he said that he would um, bone, he would <laughs> pulse along to the song and skadoosh uncontrollably. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the rhythm? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I mean, I get it. Yeah, you get it. Um, you get it. You're on board. <laughs> I think it's not so surprising as long as it's in a mix of other songs. But I, well, the way I interpreted it from the memes was that it was like. Only that song. No, this was the song, his favorite one, the hottest oh, one. He liked to, he tried to and I'm time sorry to this say this, bust too. He, yeah, he tried to time it into the climax. Yeah, yeah that's weird. That's not the climax Skadoosh. song I think most people want. Probably not. And what is? Whole New World. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, well, wait, wait, Holy World. The Whole, whole, whole new, new World. world. Oh. New world. Don't you dare close your eyes. And Zach, what was your song? So Rita Ora is a person who is famous mm -hmm. and she did a cover of America's favorite revival song, Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill, Whoa. a song that I think uh, needs to end. <laughs> I think we're done. And this, you're going to have to go to Instagram or perhaps YouTube for this. It, she performed it live and it is bad. Mm, can't wait. So just imagine you're in the throes of passion. <laughs> oh no. Oh like how do you get into a rhythm? So you're slow. It's this is a slower moment. She's making it like a super ballad. It is It's bad. Oh. I think this is like borderline Fergie level. No, keep it going, keep Miles. It going. <laughs> I don't prefer listening to it. This is really tough. This is Fergie's national anthem. Does it pick up and stat. become the song again? No, oh, that's the Jesus. end. And then she crawls on the ground and does like a little sexy pose. Who is Rita Ora? That's yeah, the, who that's, is Rita Ora? That I think Good is an important question yeah. that America is still waiting to answer. <laughs> I don't really know her. I, I'd say that we're, you know, nearly a decade into her career and we've yet to answer the question of who is Rita Ora. And I hope to one day find out. Yeah, yeah. same. Like, is she a singer? Exactly. Well, then, yes, we hope to find out. 
We hope you know, that one day. I'm a singer. I was just on tour. Yucky. I had a wonderful time on tour. Thanks to everybody who came out. I know a lot of people said they came because they heard the plugs on the podcast and they were super excited. Oh, yeah. um, the show was great. And I was happy to be able to once again throw food at the audience Woo! at a live show. Wow. I have begun. We're back, baby. I have begun whipping tortillas like Frisbees during White People Taco Night at the audience. Oh and it's my. beautiful. I'll grab like four or five at a time and throw them and they'll fly about 10 feet and then they'll just spread like doves. Wow. Almost like almost like a tortilla shotgun. Like they'll wow. rip apart. They'll rip apart. You no, know, they they I'll throw four oh. and they'll 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 fly together for a moment and then they'll separate. Wow. That's amazing. And it's beautiful. Birds. It's yeah, yeah, it feels like birds. It's very funny. People are getting whipped in the face with them. Super funny. They're bringing them to me and we're signing the oh. tortillas oh, now at the end of the so show. Funny. Disgusting. So disgusting <laughs> yeah. and funny. Uh, White people taco night is really a work of art. It's it's a great one. So big yeah so much bigger than i am <laughs> so much bigger than this podcast well, it's truly it one of on. the only capital v viral things i've ever made yeah Wait, right like in it has terms a life of, beyond i didn't mean to make it yeah it be lots and lots of people have heard it have uh -huh. celebrities have done takes on it other people like there's millions and there's probably billions yeah. of impressions of have the song celebrities which celebrity? Oh, Lizzo, Lizzo saying Lizzo green Lizzo chili enchilada night. Oh my um, gosh. Oh like, my gosh. There's, there's been so many who have done little riffs <laughs> off of it. And um, other like on Food Network, like everybody, so many people know it. I'll, well, every in, show in we true do, viral fashion, fashion, you don't own it anymore. Like it's, it has no, a life beyond you. No, right? and we perform it and there's always people at the show because we'll ask now and th that didn't know that that was our song until they heard us sing it right then. And it started, originated on this podcast. Yeah. And then that went like a little viral. A then fan you, ripped it. Yeah. And put it out. And actually it went pretty viral from and that. The, right. And then and the real one. That I'm we got to figure out who one. that fan is. Yeah. I mean, they 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 probably listen to this. They'll probably let us know. Let us know on Twitter. You're the, you're the one. Yeah. You they, did it. They did it. And then I made a full version with Lou Berger, put that out. And then that has... Wow. done its own thing. And, and then like I the made a version and then I also uploaded it and it was just Keith, but I kind of am stealing some revenue from yeah, it. It's good. Yeah. There's so much revenue to get on TikTok for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, no, it is super fun. And the, all the other songs like people love. We had lots of merch. We had just lots of people. We did one show for 800. Do you have a white people taco night shirt? No, you fucking should. I know, you know, it came after it came into popularity after we had already made all these other shirts and we're trying to sell through those mm. designs, but we are making one. Obviously. So buy yourself a Lou Burger shirt so we can get some white people taco night merch. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was really fun. I, I, the best thing that I did though on the tour was in Wisconsin. <gasps> we went to House on the Rock. Dude, this shit sounds so <laughs> freaking lit. Uh, and this is, if you are in the Midwest, and you are within a five-hour drive of this place, you got to make a weekend out of it. Because it itself, what it is, is is an old Frank Lloyd Wright house that is the first level of the experience. And you go through this crazy, this house is like, this is crazy. And but the house just, is filled can, with... If I can set the stage, yes. I want you to imagine if Keith and myself were centric multimillionaires in the mid-50s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. What would we have done... What would we have built? What would our legacy be? Why it might look something like this madhouse. You go in this first house and you're like, wow, this is super cool. It's kind of, it's very like 50s to 70s era. Like there's carpet on the ceiling and the floor and all the, ce the ceilings are way Fuck too low yeah, for me. There should be carpet. And on you're the going around everywhere. and it's like, wow, everything here is soft. It's so cool. And it takes like 45 minutes just to explore the first house. And uh, in each room, there's something that makes music. Huh. And the, the word, uh, I think the word is calliope. And it's a, an instrument that is like, it play, it like through animatronics, it actually plays the music. Like, calliope. like there's robot arms that play strings and those strings oh, make sounds. Oh, cool. So and it's, okay. So it's not like a, um, an animatronic and then there's a rec, uh, a recording. speaker. This it's, is actually the, the robots robot are arm. creating music or there's cool. fans blowing across jugs. Mm. And now, and some of them, the, they're too run down and it is a speaker and they're just moving, but sure. some of them really are still emanating the sound. And there's like mm. some of them that are the size of a <laughs> How room. stupid. But you go into this house, there's all these cool things. You're like, wow, this is cool. That was, that was amazing. And then they're like, okay, Okay, now go to this section two. And you go to section two and everything changes. This is a museum, but you never, and you're underground. You must just be underground because like, I walk, we're walking into this place and like, oh, this is cool. And then suddenly I'm on a small 
city downtown street, <laughs> but it's inside. Like it's like Vegas, but it's like a brick ground and there's storefronts that you can't go in, but there's storefronts and you're walking through like a little alley and you're like, it's almost like Harry Potter. Like, where am I? How did I get to this? How am I? Uh, am I outside? No, I'm not outside. I'm in this house, but where, huh? And you're, and there's still more of these calliopes and other things. And it's super cool. And then you go down this hallway and there's a hallway and there's a few paintings, but one of the painting really calls to you. You're like, I've got to look at this painting. It's a, a big shark whale monster fighting an octopus in the ocean. It's like, wow, this is cool. It's crazy. And you walk through the hallway. And as you get to the end of the hallway, you're in a room with a 300 foot ceiling and there's an entire sculpture of that painting. There is a full size the shark whale gigantic oh shark whale God. fighting oh. a full size gigantic octopus. And it's real. The painting you just saw is now a real thing that you're walking around. And it's like probably four stories tall, if not five Whoa. stories tall. It's crazy. And then you just walk and then it's like, now that's Keith, that to, room. To stop right there, a shark whale. Yeah. What is that? Well, it looked like a whale, but it had rows and rows of teeth like a shark. Right. That's terrifying. Yeah. And then you got in the top, you could see into its gigantic mouth and it looked like there was a boat in the mouth as well. So crazy. And what's crazy so then cool. is that the third room, they have a real live shark whale. Yeah. That yeah. They yeah. Can swim it around. Like if Meow Wolf was made by a billionaire in the 50s and, it, oh, and, and wow. you have to go through in a certain order, but he had just collected everything you could collect, like every collectible thing at that time in the smallest and biggest version. So I probably saw 400 model ships. Oh, wow. Everywhere from like ship in a bottle size to, you know, the size of this coffee table or bigger. Wow. Like, and they were just millions of them. And then there were doll houses and dolls. And there were like one of the biggest carousels in the world and you can't ride it, but he's, it, there's not a single horse on the carousel. Every, he's replaced all the horses with different carousel animals that he has found and acquired over his life. That's so cool. So there, and like, it was just, honestly, I'm not even describing it well. <laughs> yeah, damn, I want to go. You've got That's... to go. It take When I bought the ticket, it was only $30. And she said, this will take three to four hours <gasps> to experience. Wow. That's an amazing deal. And it was, I would say, just the first house was well worth it. Yeah. Like the level one. And there's like three areas. And it just kept getting goofier and goofier and crazier and crazier. And you've got, to, there was a room that the whole room was an organ and you're wandering around and there's all smaller organs in that. It was a labyrinth. It's just a labyrinth of bizarre collectible stuff. And I, you've got to go. Yeah. Wow. You should just make a trip to Madison, Wisconsin to go because it's west of there. College that town. Sick yeah. As hell. So all the college kids listening, they might even have, I think they have student tickets. What a great way to spend it, your afternoon. It sounds a lot. Yeah, it's like Meow Wolf, but like vintage. Yes, <laughs> it is. It, yeah. it was just thrift the most store fun. Meow Wolf. Yeah, right. The most fun. And it was Lou Berger and, and Brian Wool was with us on the tour. And we just had a wonderful, wonderful time. Mm. Mm. It a was wonderful, joyous. wonderful we time. We drove and mm. sang songs and did comedy and ate at diners and ate a lot of wings. And it was a great week of, of uh, seeing people and having of fun. Bonding. Of bonding. Bond. It was really, it was really great. It was yeah. an enriching cool. life experience, but uh, <laughs> you might need advice in how do you could have a fun week. And I don't know if that's what you'll get, but you'll get advice about something from our Miles boy, Miles man. It's advice that'll go, go for miles. Miles to man. To your radio miles station. It's advice that'll go for miles. Advice that'll go for miles. Everybody get ready for your most anticipated segment of the episode. Advice that'll go for miles. He's got something for you, whether you're a person or a dog. The tripod. Heavy award winning segment. <laughs> What's up, Miles Nation? How's everybody doing tonight? Chirp, 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 yes, chirp, chirp, yes, chirp, yes, yes. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to get cold? Burr. Have you ever <laughs> wanted that sticky little feeling that happens when two great ideas collide? Can someone make a composition of every time Miles says the word sticky? Thank you. Cold. <laughs> what? I want to get Maddie on that. Two ideas coming together and it results in it's cold. It's definitely an ice cream, Sammy. I'm getting oh. a bag. Uh oh. Ice cream in an ice bath. Someone's getting a bag. <laughs> Someone's getting a bag or you're getting a bag. Goody, go, goody bags? More like bags of ice. ice. Because sometimes your ice cubes 
are too little and bad. And sometimes as an adult man, I want to get <laughs> colder than the freaking reindeer at Santa's little fuck fest. <laughs> are there still tickets available for this year's Santa fuck fest, by the way? <laughs> I'm telling you that if you got an ice poop tray, you're going to say nay, nay, nay. You did a tip about ice cubes. Well, I got new, new ice cubes. cubes. <laughs> then I had a party. Then I had an ice cube. I bought a bag of ice. And then I've been using the bag of ice in you my daily a- life. I got a bag of ice in my freezer. And... I've been using that to be a geezer instead of Keisha. Instead, <laughs> so you can be a Keith, please. Keith, please. I didn't say I'm in the middle Keith. Keith. <laughs> Keith. Yeah. And so I've been using ice from a bag. So that way I'm like, I want a cup of water. <laughs> using like a big cup of ice. Water, water, water. Gets that ice cold. And I don't have to like pop a cube tray and struggle bus with my struggle pus from the infected wound that is my ice cube trays. So I'm trying to say to everybody, (laughs) if you want to get extra ice in these hot, hot times, get a bag of ice because they're like $2. Do you keep a plastic cup in the freezer for the ice scooping? No, I use my cup. Is it a glass? No. Okay. I've been doing the bear thing. The thing from the bear (laughs) where he uses like the soup container to drink water. I. Oh, wow. I've been doing that. Weird. It's been kind of awesome, though, because here's the thing. It's the size, if not bigger than a mason jar, but it's plastic, so I don't have to worry about shattering it. Yeah, and you definitely, you don't want to scoop ice through the glass. No, because that's how you get glass in your body. In your ice, and then you eat it, and then you die. That's If you've watched the bear, you know you got to melt that ice. you got to scoop ice with plastic or uh-huh. metal. Yeah. Plastic is best because you can keep it in the fridge, and it doesn't get cold. Metal gets cold and hurts your hand. Yeah. But if you want, if you have an ice cube back in your freezer yeah. put a solo cup in there yeah okay i don't That's mean to make cup. this advice section all about me and my yeah, problems exactly. but i'm gonna so i have a i have an ice maker in my freezer because got that youtube money hey mm-hmm. so we've got a <laughs> mm-hmm. we've got, See, this is for yeah this is the for people who um don't have a and just i'll let you finish in a second this is for people who don't have a mansion in the hollywood hills go ahead yeah, yeah, two-door yeah. fridge <laughs> as we like to call it the epitome of luxury yeah exactly. so let's, i want to talk to my two-door fridgey uh yeah. and slot. you've got a fridge just for san pellegrino go ahead yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my third fridge i'm talking about <laughs> so there's this thing that's been going on where i open my fridge and there's just frost yeah everywhere in your fridge and, in my freezer and at first I thought because I was freezing bananas and I left the bag open because I don't have time to do that little zip zip. So at first thought Maggie it was like, dude, the bananas <laughs> are time, like. Sorry, you don't have time to zip lock a bag. I'm a busy man. You know okay. the morning. <laughs> You've heard his morning ritual. Oh, right it's now. crazy. Well, yeah. first of all, I have the the He's fridge maid who comes <laughs> around <laughs> and right. normally, but we had to. I forgot. She segues in. At first, I thought the banana was like expelling moisture. Right. So I start. <laughs> so I start zipping that. But now, now. I don't know what it is. Maggie thinks that I'm not closing the freezer hard enough and there's like, and it's melting and then freezing, melting and freezing and creating this frost. I'm like, no, the thing is closed. So if any freezer experts out there you know what's from the, the banana no the banana we've already we've Some, already debunked. There's moisture coming in from somewhere is basically what it sounds I like. I think that the ice maker is broken <sighs> and is creating like this frost over it. But like I open it and everything like cr- cr- like crunched together because we yeah, have those the little drawers. The closed. No. The fr- no that's the, it's horses, not zebras. If you hear hoofprints, think horses, not zebras. They teach this in med school, Zach. I'd expect you to know it. If you watch Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> you'd know this. But if the fridge is having an issue where there's ice that's fucking icing on the shit because it's melting and it's icing, the fridge is not maybe closed. Well, but maybe then what do I do? Because I'm maybe, closing it. Maybe one of the rubber um, mm-hmm. seals is ripped. Yeah. And there's like a this size gap, and that's why. You ever that think sounds about like that? a zebra to me. Yeah. Sounds like a zebra. <laughs> That's right. What a great episode of the tripod this one was with Rainy's Red Bull and our morning stuff. I bet you were like, wow. Oh, yeah. How do you feel, Rainy? I feel so crazy. <laughs> I also- <laughs> you haven't been talking about it. I, I, well, I've just been like going on my little ride. When you were doing your little bit in the beginning of your advice, I was like, ah. Yeah, you were also joining in the chaos of the Miles song. Yeah. Wow. I was like, Can you hold ah. your hand out straight? Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> shaking, shaking like so crazy. Much. Yeah, so I'm feeling I don't even know. I I only drank half of it, but it's not stronger than cold brew, but, but it's, it's sugar. It's, it's, it's different. Sugar. High. And I think it's yeah. the empty stomach too. Oh, yeah. it's the sugar too to me. Like the yeah, sugar That's why I do a, the sugar free mm. because it's like too much zazz yeah. with the real sugar. Sugar on your yeah. teeth feeling. 
Wow. Well, we'll uh, keep checking in with Rainey at, from a, more of a scientific method on yeah. the Afterpod. Join us over there. Get merch if it's your thing. But till next time, Keith, here's with the official Tripod theme song. One, two, three, four. Are you feeling good tonight? I hope you're feeling good tonight. Oh, yeah. Are you feeling good tonight? I hope you're feeling good oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Baby Tripod. Girl.